When I'm painting rocks, I use my brush as if it's like a knife. And every, every area that's the same color, is, that you know, maybe it's just one stroke of the brush, is an edge of the rock. It's like I sliced it off and now that edge is all flat and facing the same direction because the same color means the same light from the same direction. So then if I start doing different, uh, di different values of shadow versus light all over that rock, it's going to look like it has a lot of different angles on it. But then the question is, what are the right colors to use? And I know this is a struggle. So I'm using black, and I know that this is something that's gone wrong a lot for a lot of people, but what happens with black is that it tends to mix with the white and create very gray shadows. And shadows don't look very natural unless they have a lot of color in them. Your naked eyes can see a lot darker uh, um, <laughs> value, <clears throat> a lot darker shades. So your black that you use when you're painting is just a shade of gray. It's not like a real shadow that's total darkness. Now the reason I'm saying that is because since you're able to see such dark shades in real life, you're able to see color to a much darker level than you can produce with paint. So you mix color with black in, in paint, you can only get it so dark before it just becomes gray. But in real life, you're accustomed to seeing very deep colors in shadows. And you're so accustomed to seeing these colors in shadows that it doesn't look right when you don't see them. Gray shadows, with the exception of shadows that, that would be gray because of the lighting scenario, Gray shadows don't, don't look natural. So a lot of color in the shadows is my point. So the way I do that is I start with black, and then I start adding red. For in this case, with these rocks, I'm adding red and green. They're opposite colors on the color wheel, and when you mix them, they're going to create brown. And so that is, the green is just a shortcut. I could use red, yellow, and blue, but yellow and blue make green, so red and green is the same as using red, yellow, and blue. So I'm going to mix red and green to get my brown to just less colors to mix, you know. And that is going to add as much color as possible to that black. And that red and green is going to make a real nice brown for me. And once I have that very dark brown, that's, that's my shadow. And I start adding white to that. And then there is a certain degree of white you can add to a color that actually makes it a brighter color before it starts making it a more muted color. If you keep adding white, there's a certain point when it, just like when you get so black you lose the color, once you get so white you lose the color. But there's a point in the middle where you can have some really nice bright tones and that is what I want to use to have the look of just nice natural light hitting the surface, bright vibrant color. And so I want to, but in the case of rocks, I mean Rocks are not bright, vibrant colors, so I'm going to allow black to be in that. So this is why I have this method. Black first, then the color, then the white, and I build out from that. So you'll see, no, before I say that, I'm going to say, um, <clears throat> so what did I do? What did I do when I did? Painting the rocks, painting the shape. Oh yeah, we need to talk about it. Right. Now, the shape of the rocks. This is also a difficult thing. So, a lot of this for me is still trial and error. But, a method that I found is helpful in kind of speeding the process is doing... Uh, so, like if you start with the circle shape, maybe just imagining it or maybe actually painting it on the wall. Well, I'll take some blob of paint and start cutting sides off of it so that I get this rigid shape, but I'm careful not to make them all the same size. So my rule, as it is with painting clouds also, is small, medium, large. Small, medium, large, small, medium, large, over and over, everything I do, small, medium, large, systematically, it's a systematic way to avoid being systematic. 
you you repeat a pattern of threes because I don't know there's just something magical about the number three so you, if you take a circle and cut three different size slices off of it then you'll have a, a very for lack of a better word random shape so when I'm creating shapes I, I keep this in mind you might want to try it it might work good for you so let's talk about the shadow and the light when I'm doing these rocks you know you need you need to know where the light is coming from so that you know where the darker area is going to be the shadow and maybe there's multiple light sources and maybe there's multiple shadows but for the sake of simplicity I'm just going to refer to it as one light source one shadow and you uh, will have the underside of the rocks will be very close to black if it's a downward facing horizontal plane if it's an upward facing horizontal plane it's going to be very close that'll be your closest to a, a white and so every angle in between is an in between level of, of lightness or darkness so if I have a shape right here it might be very bright but as it bends down darker 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 I mean a shape uh, an angle that's facing this way is not going to be as bright as an angle that's facing this way if the light is straight overhead because the light is getting spread thinner across this surface than it is on this one. So the effect is a gradual change, not a sudden change, where the light meets the shadow. Every time an edge bends further from the light, it gets a little bit darker. This is how I shade these, and like I said, I just have different movements with the brush. It's like I'm slicing off. I get a shadow color, and I, it's like I'm slicing off edges of that rock. With the shadow color, I'm slicing underneath with the light color slicing on on top edges you know with with boulders sometimes you have a lot of cracks in, in, in between where multiple boulders are are maybe they're leftovers from multiple layers of rockers and I don't I don't know but you might have cracks that are going through traveling if you want to do this kind of look where you have deep crevices in the rock a good way to do this this is my method is starting with pure black and then I add the color on both edges of that black and this is a wet on wet technique and so I can only do so so big of an area and then I just do the next area over and use the exact same method and let it overlap you know because I get asked the question all the time it dries too fast what do I do about it drying too fast you let it dry and then you come back over it with the next you just overlap it and because this is a rock it's okay those hard edges create hard turns where the soft edges create soft turns on the rock so I make that that crack and then I put those deep colors next to it and I get gradually lighter as I go out adding white to where I added first the color so in the very middle where the crack is is pure black then it's my deep saturated colored shadow then as I add white I get that bright color more and more as it comes out and I can make real hard edges real divided little shapes so that the rock looks more chiseled and geometric or I can blend them smoothly so the rock looks more rounded and this is how I just trial and error just keep doing it one layer after another I just make the crack go in a certain direction and cross them over make little ones big ones and try to stick with the small medium large trick you know if you have a you know when you look at the whole picture as a whole it's good if you can identify a small, medium, and large area. Uh, you know, like maybe there's one traveling crack that's made up of lots of little cracks, and then a medium and a large, no, small, yeah, large, medium, small. you know what I mean. All right. So then when you zoom in on the small things, this helps too, you know, so that, so this is kind of like a fractal, you know, when you look at the whole picture, it represents that pattern of, of uh, one, two, three, and then when you zoom in, all the little areas also resemble that similar pattern. Now, let's talk about that horizontal top side of a rock because I've, I've been asked a lot about this too, those flat rocks in the sun. In Arizona, we have a lot of these because these are left over from sedimentary rock layers, you know, and, and the layers get split apart. Some of them get washed away. Then what's left is this big flat flagstone, they call a lot of it, but it's there's different kinds of rock that has those flat layers. But what's What's fun about this, kind of like slate, it has little, real thin layers making up big.
bigger layers, but the, the result will be it'll chip off and leave these curved and straight lines. And so I love making these little edges on the top side of a flat rock. So the, the first step to making it look flat on the top is using horizontal brush strokes. And I'll be filling in the, the lit area. So I'll just call that the positive space and I'll just call the shadow the negative space. I'm, I'm staying on that positive space, just letting what's left in between create my little my little layer lines. So those would be like stair steps, little stripes, a, a little shadow represents where there's a, just a small edge of it that's, that's turning vertical and then going back to the flat edge. And I can make just a thousand of these across the surface of the rock. But then I come over into the shadow and, and this is a fun thing about light is that it it just comes from everywhere every object is a light source so you can have this thing over here on the left some green leaves they're casting a, a dim green light this way you have a bright sun over here a bright white light this so when I do the shadow on the top side of that big flat rock there's another rock hanging over it and so I'm gonna make a large shadow that's getting that's cast on that surface of the rock. But then those ridges are not facing up toward that dark light source. So it's a dark light source because it has light, but just not a lot. And it's just, it's only shining that little bit. That's all the light that's getting that. But then the edges that are facing straight out, okay, they are facing a brighter light source. They're facing that lit up surface of the rock. So this is like a secondary light source because the sun's hitting the rock and then maybe bouncing all over the place, but it's light. And so those little edges, I'll actually use what was my shadow color in the bright light to create a lighter tone in the shadow. And I can get some really nice natural looking shape in, within that shadow. But it may be in a different lighting scenario that those are darker than the overall shadow because there's not a bright light source out. You, you just decide. You're, you're the creative artist. You decide. I decided that with all that sun hitting that rock and with the way I have the water, it's going to be, you know, I just thought it would look more magical if I just put that little bit of light catching those edges. And then I continued them over, reversed, so that they're the dark little stripes going across. Now, my, my, my nice kind of a finishing touch on, on everything to make it look nice in 3D. I, and you can look at my video. I don't remember what the video is called. Something about backlighting, using backlighting. Something about backlighting. I don't know what it is. But you can take, in this case, I'm using a, a very muted shade of purple. And I'm just going to just swipe it across all of those right side edges of the rocks. So that when I finish my other elements in the painting, like the water over there, it's gonna looks real reflective, like it's catching a totally different light source on the edge of that rock. And, it, and the blue just has a way of, of just dropping back into the picture and making it look nice in 3D. It's a real strategic method of enhancing the depth of, of the object. So same way I did the other shadows, I'm just doing it with that blue. And you'll notice that that shade of that bluish purplish gray is not a lot darker than the the other shadows, just a different color. And this different color, so this creates a lot of interesting diversity to the lighting on the rocks. It makes it more 3D like that. The contrast of the blue on the one side, the orange on the other, that's a natural opposite color contrast. They're opposite on the color wheel, just like red and green are. So a blue shadow next to an orange tone light has a real real dynamic look to it. Well, I hope this has been helpful, and if I can think of anything else on the Rocks, I'll post it.